eggs pack a punch when it comes to nutrition. And they're actually fairly simple to add to our meals and to our cats and dogs meals. So today we're gonna see why eggs are such a fantastic addition, why they are such a powerhouse in nutrition, and what are the things that we need to know when we are considering purchasing eggs for our family, whether human or animal. Eggs are a complete protein. That means that they contain all of the 20 amino acids that are necessary for our bodies and our animals' bodies to function correctly. They're also considered the gold standard for bioavailability of protein. 99% of the protein present in our egg, we actually get to absorb through our gut, through our animal's gut as well, and makes it into our body. They're also very rich in vitamin A, folate, riboflavin, iron, vitamin B12, selenium, fatty acids, and the antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthin. And most importantly, eggs are one of the best sources of choline, which is a nutrient that we need to take in with our food and is necessary for the correct functioning of our whole body. And choline is particularly important for those of us who are kitty owners. So we know that kitties are a little bit more sensitive, especially when it comes to their liver. And that's kind of why we start worrying when they start skipping meals, because we're afraid of fatty liver disease. Now, the the University of Guelph did a study where they took some overweight and actually obese cats and they did supplement their food with choline. By the end of the study, the blood work showed improvement in the liver enzymes. So choline is definitely a wonderful friend for those of us who are kitty owners. So here's the thing. You can totally feed raw eggs if they come from good sources and they are healthy eggs. You can give them to dogs and cats and you can actually choose to give them with the shell as well. Eggs are actually fantastically balanced and complete with their shell. I have done both. I have opened it and left the shell in their dish, or I've also just fed the egg complete once my animals knew how to eat it and let them enjoy it because it's a snack. But wait, aren't we supposed to cook egg whites because they contain anti-nutrients? Yes and no. So here's the thing. So egg whites do contain avidin, which is a molecule that actually binds to biotin and makes it so that it cannot be as readily absorbed when you take it in. And they also contain a trypsin inhibitor, which is a molecule that actually hinders the absorption of protein. And then we just say that eggs are the best source of protein because they're like the gold standard for bioavailability. We did. Unless you are planning on feeding your animals or your family basically only eggs all day, every day for weeks at a time, this is really not a problem because we are only feeding eggs once in a while. Everything is good in small measure, so eggs should be put into a rotation as part of a balanced diet, then you don't need to worry about that. You also wanna keep in mind that egg yolk is very rich in biotin, so of course, some of that will get balanced out. And the rest of the meat and or the meat that you are feeding your animals is also very, very rich in biotin. So I always felt comfortable with putting eggs in rotation. Now, people from different cultures feel differently about eating raw eggs. Of course, here in Europe, there are several cultures that eat raw eggs, so we are a little bit more relaxed in our attitude towards raw eggs. And I know that when I lived in North America, it was a little bit more challenging, and everybody was worried about salmonella poison. So first of all, you need to make sure that your source is good, and I will show you whether you are on this side or the other side of the pond, how you can check actually on your eggs and on the carton if it's good quality. And I admit, I always struggle a little bit when I'm buying food for my animals, I obviously feeding raw, so I'm always buying meat and meat products. And even when I'm buying eggs, I'm really conscious that the way the animals were raised and the kind of life they led would impact the nutrition that my animals get. And that's true for eggs as well. So what I am trying to do is I try to go with either organic or free range chickens. As I can get local eggs from local farmers who did not pay to have the organic certification, but they are offering much better living condition to their animals. So the animals go outside, they have a lot of space per animal, which is actually one of the things that I really like about organic meat. So that is something that I urge you maybe to look into because animals who eat good food and actually get to see the sunshine will actually be able to store more nutrients. And that's the thing about the egg, right? It contains everything that a new chick needs to actually come to be. So everything that the chicken eats and the air that it breathes and the sunshine, everything contributes to all of the nutrients that it can put into that egg. So the better quality of light for the chicken, the better quality of eggs she will produce. Now there's a small caveat to feeding eggs and that's if your animal is sensitive to chicken. Now many of our animals, I actually have two of them, are very sensitive to chicken and obviously eggs are made from chicken. So your animal might be sensitive to 
chicken eggs. Does that mean you can't feed eggs? Actually, it doesn't. What you can do is you can go to a different species. So I have fed quail eggs. Another option are goose eggs or duck eggs. I'll look around in some of your local stores to see if they carry different type of eggs. And I wouldn't be surprised. At least quail eggs are very, very common. The other thing you can do is to see if there are farms that are local. So maybe go to your farmer's market or if you live in the country, just check out the local farmers. If they have ducks and if they have geese, then they most likely will have eggs and you might be able to purchase it for them and offer it to your animals. I mentioned before that we need to be careful when we look at which eggs we buy. If you are in the European Union like I am, every egg will have a stamp and the stamp on it will have a code for the type of farming that it comes from. Then it will have a two letter code indicating what country it comes from. And then it has a series of numbers, which are actually the registration number of the establishment where the egg was laid. So you could actually technically use that code to go back and see where the egg actually comes from. If you are on the other side of the pond and you are in the US, for example, you will have to look at the carton and the egg carton will have the expiration date, it will have the packaging date, and it will also have the code of the establishment where the egg was laid. Keep in mind that the pack date is actually a number that goes from one to 365 or 366. They basically give sequential numbers. So February 1st would actually be number 32. I also did a little bit of research for those of you watching from Canada or those of you watching from Australia. I noticed that actually every um, province or every state, I think in Australia, forgive me, I'm really bad at geography, correct me in the comments if I made a mistake on that because we can always learn and I'd love to learn. So anyway, you have to go and look at locally what system is used, but you can definitely find basically the same information that we can find here or you can find in the US. If you're interested to see what else I add to my animals meals, Go ahead and check out this video. Thank you for watching us. Give your dog and cat a kiss from us and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!